railways, mining, quarrying, industrial use, and submersion of large portions of landscapes due to large dams. So few wildlife areas and tigers remain that there is no margin of safety between survival and extinction. Planning regulations are either not in place or not enforced as they should be in and around wildlife areas. History has shown repeatedly that in a conflict between man and wildlife, wildlife ultimately loses. The tiger is no exception to this general rule. The certain amount of lip service is paid to conserving the tiger, in actual fact, there is very little dedication to the concept of wildlife preservation, and we know from past experience that politicians and others greedy for land have had many an argument to support their diversion of forest lands to so-called more productive land uses. The problem is further confounded by the fact that with the current attitudes and beliefs, there is little done for the motiv motivation and sustenance of the peripheral level wildlife workers. World experience has shown that well-managed wildlife tourism is a positive force for conservation. There are three reasons why this is so. Well-managed tourism provides financial resources for the parks and protected area systems. It generates work for local people, develops local skills and local economies, and deters them from resorting to poaching and illicit diversion of forest resources. The presence of tourists in the park and protected areas fosters transparency in the management and discourages misuse of forest resources. They also serve as a very efficient early warning system. Wildlife tourism has grown to an extent that many countries and indeed continents today have come to specialize in it and have made it one of their major revenue earning sources. Take for instance Africa that has earned a reputation in tourism circles for its exotic wild animals and the infrastructure it has developed to facilitate tourist inflow. Wildlife in many ways has become its economic mainstay. Non-consumptive, wildlife-oriented recreational tourism is an ever-growing segment of the tourism industry. The global market size of wildlife tourism today is an estimated 12 million trips annually and is growing at about 10% per annum. It is popular and generates significant economic benefits. This is incredibly important because these benefits build political support for the conservation of wildlife species. This is also relevant when public money has to be spent on conservation and when land has to be set aside or the conservation program impedes other human activities. The tourism industry must be more responsible and self-regulated to ensure that the interest of wildlife conservation is at the forefront of its agenda, leaving wildlife managers free to focus on protection and management of the protected areas with reference to habitat, water, and species. Finally, I would like to end by saying that we need to remember the things we sometimes forget we know. The age-old knowledge that for the tiger to survive, all that is required is not rocket science. It's a good prey base, habitat, and water availability. And above all, total, unswerving, unrelaxed, zero tolerance protection from poaching, from habitat degradation and loss, and equally much from political and economic short-sightedness. Almost everyone in this august gathering already knows the factors I've listed. Please ask yourselves if these conditions are being met with honesty in your region. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rana, for speaking through experience and sharing us your very uh, knowledgeable remarks. May I now invite on stage Mr. Vladimir Kirillov, the Honorable Head for the Federal Service for Natural Resource Management, Oversight of Russia, to kindly say a few words. Russia is one of the largest countries in the world. It covers more than 17 million square kilometers. Such immense space has caused a huge landscape and ecosystem diversity and has made a major contribution to global biological diversity. Federal Service for Natural Resources Management is supervising all the activities in different nature conservation fields, such as subsoil, water, air, waste, biodiversity. 
Availability of unique fauna and flora species is, first of all, a big responsibility. For the purpose of ecosystem diversity conservation, 204 special protected areas of federal level have been established and are functioning in Russia. Their total area numbers um, 580,000 square kilometers, which is 3% of the Russian Federation territory. This system of nature reserves is unique and is exceptionally precious from the point of supporting the natural ecosystems functioning and biodiversity conservation, including rare and, and endangered species, ecological monitoring, scientific researches, and environmental education, not only in the Russian scale, but also in the world scale. Russian system of special protected areas is of international importance and is recognized everywhere. There is a number of special protected areas that are UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Ramsar Wetlands, nominees of the European Council Diplomas. There are strict reserves that are included in other transboundary protected areas. According to numerous international documents signed by the Russian Federation, Russia has to provide effective protection of rare species. So this special inspection tiger, established in the 90s, played an important role in AMU tiger protection. The activity of this inspection was highly appreciated on the international level, mostly due to developed and implemented strategy of AMU, AMU tiger conservation. The history of the species indicated that the tiger is a vulnerable animal, despite of its big size and huge physical power. Federal Service for Natural Resources Management supports the initiative of the Special Inspection Tiger to establish in Primorsky region a rescue and rehabilitation center for the Amur tiger and Far East leopard and a number of other rare species that inhabit the Far East of Russia. Its main goal is to work out methods that allow to return a wild animal to its natural environment. An important role in the tiger conservation activities of the Federal Service for Natural Resources Management plays international cooperation, as this is a global challenge. Federal Service for Natural Resources Management and Special Inspection Tiger are planning to take active part in the preparation work for the International Tiger Forum that is planned to be held in Vladivostok in autumn 2010. On behalf of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment of the Russian Federation and the Government of the Russian Federation, I invite the participants of the Kathmandu Global, Global Tiger Seminar to join the forum. In addition, I would like to say that the Federal Service for Natural Resources Management, as an administrative focal point of the CITES Convention, will participate in its 15th Conference of the Parties in March 2010, where the tiger issues will also be discussed. We would, we would like to discuss these global and important questions during the Global Tiger Seminar here in Kathmandu, because these problems have always been and will be the foreground task for the Federal Service for Nature natural resources management. Thank you for your attention. I would now like to request uh, the Right Honorable Prime Minister of Nepal, Mr. Madhav Kumar Nepal, for his remarks. I am pleased to have an opportunity to attend the Kathmandu Global Tiger Workshop 2009 and share opinions with experts who have come to Kathmandu with common objectives of assessing the present level of conservation and devising new strategies and urgent actions to stop the alarmingly downward trend of tiger population. It is appalling that an iconic animal of great significance both culturally and religiously across Asia is in such a precarious situation. I would also like to extend a very warm welcome to you all in Nepal. All of you are aware that Nepal is currently passing through a transitional political stage and moving ahead with 